What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I have a very powerful message to give you. Every now and then I like to make these videos that talk about what really happens in the real world as we start off in our careers and even as we grow within our careers. The challenges that come with it, the ups, the downs, all of that good stuff. And this video right here is no different. So today I wanna to talk to you about something that I think is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. A lot of people feel this way. A lot of people want to just walk out of their jobs and leave it forever and never have to work for anybody again, or at least never work at the place they're working at ever again. And I will tell you straight up, this is the biggest personal finance pain point that I've ever had in my life. Like the biggest one of all time. And it's because, you know, when we're young and we're going to school and we're being told and taught our whole lives that going to work is the way, that is how you're going to make your living, that is how you're going to get everything that you want out of life. And then if you're like me and you went to college or you went to community college or trade school or something, you furthered your education after high school and you did so in pursuit of a higher paying job, something that's more specialized, something that was in to something that you were interested in doing, only to get the job and absolutely hate it. That is exactly, word for word, what happened to me. It's a huge pain point within personal finance, within a lot of things, and it affects multiple aspects of your life because if you hate your job, now you're dragging. You really don't want to go there. You might not be getting paid enough. You might not be getting appreciated. You might be working too many hours, or you might have a combination of all three like I did. And that right there is frustrating, and it's going to hit multiple aspects of your life because when you lay down your head at night as you get ready to go to sleep, you start thinking about these things. Man, I got to go to work tomorrow. I don't even get paid enough to do this mess. I got to spend time for my family to go to this place that doesn't even appreciate me. You're probably thinking about how working here at this place, even though you're probably thankful to have a roof over your head, you're probably just thinking to yourself like, man, this, this job barely covers my expenses. You might go to sleep having anxiety or waking up having anxiety. No, I got to walk in here. I'm going to get yelled at. I'm going to have this and that going on going to get my job threatened at least three times a day. My boss likes to talk to me crazy. He's lucky we're not outside of work. You know, stuff like that that's just going to cross your mind day in and day out. And that's very stressful. And what that can do is affect your family dynamic. It can affect your relationships with your friends. Because when you're in this state of mind, you really don't have time for nothing but sleeping and eating and then going to work. And even when you're off work, it's so mentally and physically draining, you don't really want to deal with anybody. And then you become more irritable, you become less friendly, and then the people you care about the most end up going under by the wayside. And that right there is not what you need. Me personally, whenever I've gone through that myself, I just shut people out. I really don't talk to nobody. I just kind of stay in my own zone and try to figure things out for myself. I'm not saying it's the healthiest way to deal with things. That's how I dealt with things. So I know if I dealt with things that way, a lot of people probably deal with it that way too, especially if you're in a consistent state of unhappiness. And some people probably handle it better and some people probably handle it worse. But the bottom line is it's going to affect you in multiple ways. And that is going to create a situation where you just want to leave your job. And at this point, you're probably at the point where you're like, you know what? I don't care if I don't have any other options. I just I just want out. And because it becomes so unbearable. And I've said this once. I've said it twice. I've said it probably at least 20 different times on this channel, how much I hated my first ever full-time job. It was my first ever gig. It was, you know, good money. I lived in a place with, you know, a very low cost of living. I was 21. I was fired up. I was ready to go. I'm not going to go into full, full details about every little thing that went on. I have other videos for that. And I also talk about it in my book. And plus, this video is not about me. This is actually about you and what you're going through in your situation and what my advice is to you if you're someone who wants to quit your job. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But I'm just saying that to say that I can definitely empathize with how you might feel about your job at this very moment. So we're going to jump right into this because I want to help you out. So you have to look at how big of a pain point this is for you as well as your family when it comes to your job because you're going to be in one of a few categories. You might be like I was where you just got started. You're maybe three months into your job and you realize you hate it. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen young people. And when I say young people, it could be between the ages of, say, 18 and 35. But, you know, it's still pretty relative when I say young because a lot of people are young and able-bodied and have to work several years before retirement. So for the sake of this video, we'll say between 18 and 35. 
haven't really established yourself quite yet, you're brand new to the working industry, you're working full time now, you're maybe not used to 40 hours or maybe, you know, you were fooled like I was believing that you were actually going to work 40 hours and it's more like 50, 55 hours. I myself was working like 70, 80 hours and this is per week we're talking about now. But the thing is, you started it off, you were fired up and ready to go at first, you were excited, you were willing, and then everything changed the moment you started getting mistreated or you started realizing the hours you work don't really match up to the amount of money you're making for all the work that you're doing, for how tired you are at the end of the day, for how little time you get to spend with your family, for how little freedom you actually feel that you have and how little free time you feel that you have to yourself. That right there is mind wrenching and I can't tell you how many young people I've seen just straight up walk off the job. Like literally they would go to lunch and not return. And it would be because something was too stressful. Maybe their job was too difficult for them or they felt like they couldn't handle it. Maybe they felt like, you know what? Screw this. I, I, I can do something better than this. And it's not helping your case because whether you live with your parents or not, whether you live alone or not, whether you have roommates or not, what you're doing when you leave a job and you don't really give it a chance to, to build up your income, what you're doing is you're cutting your income stream consistently over the course of time. And there's a lot of people who job hop. And nowadays, believe it or not, jobs are in such demand that they don't really look extremely critically. They do look at it now and they do question like, well, why is this guy job hopping every, you know, six months or every, you know, year? That, that That's going to happen. But it's not looked at so critically that's like, you know what? I don't know. He's not getting the job and then they decline everybody who's ever job top. That does not happen anymore. Even in higher up roles, like they don't really turn that down too much. Because like I said, the demand is so high that companies are willing to take this on, especially if you're good at what you're doing, you have a proven track record. But the negative side to it is you're constantly cutting an income stream. You're constantly having to leave something that you're familiar with and then go to something else that you're unfamiliar with. You might not have gained that skill set within that role that you could have been gaining that whole time. And so me personally, I would advise against it because if you could deal with it for three months, six months, eight months, you can deal with it a few more months. To me, I didn't think it could become more unbearable until I, you know, sought counsel and I talked to my grandfather about it because he is the wisest man I know. He was like, you know, just, just hang in there a few more months. You know, you, when, you, when you leave jobs, you want to make sure you've gotten the experience, that all the experience you could possibly get from that job before you move on somewhere else. And sometimes it's going to be hard, but it's preparing you for something else and for something much better. And I take everything he says, like word for word. Like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't say, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, I don't, I don't do all of that. Like I, I take his advice, you know, for what it is. And I was like, you know what, let me let me do another month or two, you know what I'm saying? Then that turned into like another four, then another six, and then it, it was like a whole two years, you know what I'm saying, that I stayed there, or at least it was close to two years that I stayed there, and I gained a lot of valuable lessons, and what I personally did to resolve that issue was I learned everything I could. Everything I could. I took over certain projects. I learned the process. I learned because I worked in like a factory, so we were running machinery and I was in charge of the whole department, but there was no not enough time like on my shift for me to learn how all the machines worked. So I ended up coming in on my days off and learning how to use certain machinery and stuff like that, see how things work, see how what coincides with what, see how the meetings work, get as much feedback and advice as I possibly could from the leadership that I had that I actually trusted, which was not very many of them I really didn't trust hardly any of them but I took advice from those who I felt knew what they were doing and who I felt were successful within that company and it wasn't so I can move up in that company and it wasn't you know so that I could look good and blah 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 no it was so I could learn as much as I possibly could so when I moved on I had all these valuable lessons that I could lean on and those valuable lessons really did me a lot of good when I did my job interview for the job that I have right now one of the most stressful experiences I've ever been through in my life one of the most gut-wrenching, excruciating, just miserable experience I've ever had in my entire life ended up actually being one of the most valuable experiences that I've had in my life because it's brought, it's brought me up as a much more powerful and influential leader, which is what you need. And you can apply that across the board to whichever job you're talking about. So yeah, you could leave and then you'd be happy then, but at the same time, no more money's coming in. 
and most of us have bills. And even if you live with your parents, you don't want to be living with your parents sitting on the couch eating Doritos, you know what I'm saying? Watching friend reruns, feeling sorry for yourself because you don't got a job now. Like, you took it upon yourself to leave your job. And, you know, it's not always easy to just leave a job and then boom, you have another one, especially if you haven't worked anywhere long enough. You haven't really built any robust connections to where if you need it to, you can move, you know, to a different state or to a different city or to a different job in the same city. You know, like if you didn't do the work, the legwork at the beginning, if you didn't do the groundwork at the beginning, it's going to be very hard for you and it's going to take long to get to another job. And then you might the danger behind this is you might get to another job and say, you know what? I did it one time, I'm going to do it again. You know what I'm saying? It's lunchtime, I'm out. I ain't coming back. You know what I'm saying? This ain't for me. Do it until you find what is for you. I said it in one video before. I was struggling when I first started within my leadership role. I was 21, didn't know how to lead people. I was in charge of people who were old enough to be like my parents and grandparents. To them, it probably looked like I was in diapers walking around telling them what to do. You get what I'm saying? Anyway, this guy walked up to me. He was like, man, this ain't your calling, is it? This sure ain't your calling. And I just kind of gave him a blank expression. Like, I really didn't even know what to say because I, I, I thought I was doing something out there. He's like, this ain't your calling, man. And this guy chimed in. He was like, you know, maybe it's not his calling, but this is his calling until he finds out what he wants to do. And that's the exact advice I would give you. What you're doing right now might not be for you. What you're doing right now might not be what makes you happy. But it's putting money in your pocket. And I recommend that you keep working there. You keep learning as much as you can. And as you learn, you put away your money. And this is why personal finance is so important. That's why this whole channel is about personal finance. Because I was in that situation. I was in the situation where I hated my job. And I was afraid of losing it. And I was like, you know what? Let me keep learning so I can at least become more competitive within the company and keep on moving forward. And I was like, man, I want to leave. But if I leave now, I'm only going to have like $2,500 in my name. But then, you know, if I'm like, you know what, if I'm smart with my finances, if I put some money into this emergency fund, if I make an emergency fund for my emergency fund, if I chip away at my debt, and if I learn a little bit on the side about how the stock market works and how to invest and how to make some money grow on the side, and I'm actually making sure my money goes into my 401k, and I'm learning about Roth IRAs on the side, which by the way, I made a whole video about Roth IRAs last week. It shows you how to retire tax-free. Check that out if you have not watched it yet. It is a gold mine of a video. And by the way, quickly going off topic here, I, I noticed that some of my videos with the least amount of views have some of the deepest impact. Just want to put that out there. Anyway, I've been in that situation. That's why I created this channel. You have to become financially stable, right? Like your job might be unstable. You might not know what you're walking into. It might be a complete emotional roller coaster. You might not like your boss. You might not like your peers. You might not like anybody that's under you. If you're in a leadership role, you might not like the company. You might not like that your vacation keeps getting denied. You might not like a lot of stuff about your job. But one thing about it is that job is blessing you by paying you. And what you must do with that pay is be responsible and become stable with it. So then you have peace of mind and your mind is more stable when you go into work more and more calm. Like you should have seen me after I saved my first $20,000. Nobody in that company could tell me nothing. Not a soul, not a single threat, not nothing. Matter of fact, one time my boss came up to me because one of my operators messed up. And one of the quality engineers got mad. And instead of going to me, he went straight to my boss. Not my boss, but my boss's boss. And then he came to me and was like, you know what? Next time he does that, instead of getting mad at him, I'll send you home. Can you live with that? And I was like, yes, I can. The boy didn't know what to say after I said that now. But that's what I'm saying. You have to have that financial stability first. It's going to build confidence within you. Because if you know in your heart and in your mind that you're doing the best you can possibly be doing, and you know the outside of work with the money that you're getting from work, you're saving up, you're getting out of debt, you're not spending ridiculous amounts of money. You enjoy yourself every now and then, but you're not spending stupid amounts of money. You got your savings on automatic. And by the way, I made another video about that. It's called How to Double Your Savings. And I go into the mindset and the how-to when it comes to automating your bank account to, to automatically move money into your savings account for you without you thinking about it, without you having to lift a finger. Check that video out. It's up here as well. But you have to do the work to become 
financially stable if you want to quit your job because then once you get to a point where you had enough saved if you absolutely had to if it was so un unbearable for you like it, it was affecting your mental health you know you were you were having like thoughts of hurting yourself or something like that which actually a lot of people end up having in at work and I write about that in my book as well or if you just feel like it is destroying your family dynamic like I've known people who've had divorces behind this type of stuff or we're on the brink of getting divorces behind this stuff. And you'd be surprised the amount of money that people would pay to not have to go through a divorce. Or the amount of money that they would take a cut on from their job to not go through a divorce. Because that's truly important to them and that is a true priority. So if your priorities are straight outside of work with your money, with your family, with what you find important, you're going to become more peaceful, more confident. And you can make that call then, you know what? I got fifty thousand dollars today. Let me go ahead and put my two weeks notice in. And while, but you know, before you even do that, this is all premeditated. See, I, I'm a genius when it comes to this. Borderline evil genius when it comes to this because I, I plotted against my job for the longest time, and I, I didn't found the, another route across the country. You know what I'm saying? Applied. I was interviewing like literally when I was at work, but no one knew about it. I kept it so low key. I'm proud of this. You can tell, can't you? And then when I got the job, I was like, hey, I quit. Tomorrow's my last day. Wasn't no two week notice for me, but you know, when a company does you as bad as my last company did, you will probably do the same thing. To be honest, they're kind of lucky I gave them one day. I was about to give them one minute and walk out after doing that. I was like, and, and let him say something. If he gives me a response I don't like, I'm walking out the door that minute. They had sense though, so they didn't do all that. But you see, I didn't quit right away. I premeditated. I was like, what skills can I gain? Who can I seek mentorship from that is actually good at what they do here, who actually means well for me? How can I gain better trust from my team so they know I'm not just some stupid 21-year-old kid telling them what to do and I'm actually interested in learning and, and guiding them in the best way possible? And even though I hated it, I had to find one thing that I loved about that place whether it was my interaction with the people, whether it was the fact, whether it was the fact that my team was the highest producing team there, whether it was the fact that I got to seek one-on-one -on -one mentorship from people that I trusted, I had to find something that I actually liked and I had to hyper-focus on that. Eventually it didn't become so unbearable and I realized I was stripping because there were good days. There were a lot of bad days, but there were some good days. And when there were good days, it was like crickets. I didn't hear nothing from nobody. It was all peachy. And when it was bad, I heard from everybody. So that's what I would say to you. If you're on the young side, you're just getting started, it's feeling unbearable. You're like, man, screw this. Because school gives you this false interpretation of what work should be like. And if you didn't go to school after high school, you might have just went straight into work and be like, ah. And, you know, a lot of younger people nowadays, and there's nothing wrong with this necessarily, as long as you have a backup plan, which most people don't, but they just kind of feel like, they shouldn't have to work or like they're entitled to, you know, get paid without having to work for somebody. And that's cool if you have your own business or if you're providing some sort of value. But, you know, these guys just want to just like kick back and play video games all day or just exist and get paid. That's not how the real world works. Some people who want to quit their job genuinely just don't have a work ethic. Some people who want to quit their job are just going through something in life right now. And they feel like this job is weighing a lot on them spiritually and mentally maybe even physically. And some people like myself, you know, I was going through all that and I had entrepreneurial goals that I was trying to reach and I felt like my job was interfering with that. Because when you work six to seven days a week, it's different. Now I've done overtime on my own accord sometimes, but nine times out of 10, it was because they called me and, hey, need you to work tonight. Need you to work today. Need you to work this morning. Need you to work this afternoon. And yeah, I worked all the shifts. So it was definitely every variation of what I just said. So that's what I'm talking about. So that's my advice to someone who's in that category. But the foundation to all of this, if you want to quit your job, if you're fed up, if you're frustrated, if you're being treated the bad way, if you're not being promoted like you're wanting to, or if you want other things, if you're interested in other things outside of work and you feel like your job is holding you back from it and it's your purpose and you're just willing to go for it, you're going hard for it and everything, and your job is just all up in your way and you feel like it's not worth your time or inter interferes with your family dynamic, do you understand why you want to leave? Are you clear on that reason? Are you dedicated to it? 
And are you making the smart steps? And the foundation of that is having your personal finances together and being financially stable because a lot of times if you're financial stable, you'll be able to make much more stable-minded decisions as opposed to abrupt ones. That is my advice to anyone who wants to quit their job. Just think about it. See if you can go through with it a few a few months longer. Now, if it's unsafe and you're you know worried about your life, that's a completely different story. But I'm talking about just overall, like how you're being treated at the job. You know, if you're getting paid not well enough. You know, you, you also have to think about yourself. You, you also have to think to yourself, okay, maybe I'm not being paid what I'm worth, but am I treating this money like it's important outside of work? Am I doing everything I can do to make sure I'm being smart with my money outside of work? And you might be, and it still might not be enough, and that's fine. In which case, keep grinding and keep going until you find a job that pays more. But quitting is not going to help your financial situation. Or you might be doing good, but you still might feel like, I'm still not getting paid what I'm worth. I'm still putting money away. I, I got my six months worth of expenses in my bank right now, but I still don't feel like I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Or I, 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 still don't, I still don't feel like I'm getting paid enough, and I still feel like I wish I had more money. In which case, you have to go in full on learning new skills, getting higher paying jobs and things like that. And you have to be relentless about it. You can't get discouraged about it if you get turned down once, twice, 10, 18 times. You have to be honest about what your goals are in order to reach them. This video is getting long, so I'm going to wrap it up for you guys. That's my overall opinion and what I recommend for anyone if you just got started or if you're further along and you want to quit your job. This is for both of you especially for the people who just got started though I have an affinity for those type of people because i have 100 1000 percent been there and i'll just say this within your career seek mentorship because there have been times where i've been wanting to quit and i've like audibly said it to someone i trust and they were and, and then they were able to give me advice actionable advice that i could apply right then and there and i'm telling you it's better than if i would have just quit and then had an income stream cut and then taking a longer time to get another job and then taking a pay cut and then who knows what would have happened you know what i mean but that is my advice to you anyway if you enjoyed this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'm here to help people get financially stable get their finances on track grow bigger bank accounts and make more money work for you in your sleep so you can have a peace of mind and do what you want when you want Anyway, this video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.